What's up guys, welcome to Talking Poodoo with Star Wars Show, I'm your host Grant Burton and today I am reviewing the newest Star Wars novel, Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars by Sam Maggs. This is a book set between the events of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So, what's this book all about? Well, the crew of the Mantis happens upon a defecting stormtrooper with a unusual history and on their way they team up they are go on a little adventure to prevent the empire getting a hold of a device called the shroud which could be a big danger to any enemy of the empire so what did i think of this book well plain and simple no skirting around the edges no lying i just did not like this book i don't think this is a good book I, yeah, that's right, I do not think this is a good book. And here's why. This book is very limited in its scale and scope. It's very limited in what it can and can't do. Because it is set between two video games. It's full of characters who we know are going to survive into the next game and perhaps beyond. The main crew of the Mantis, for example, they're all in the next video game, so we know nothing too bad can happen to them in this one. There can't be too much character growth or development because they've still got to be recognizable from the end of the first game to the beginning of the next game. So it's a really tough place. The writer here is stuck between a rock and a hard place and I really kind of feel sorry for them because I think they've been given a tough job and sadly they have not succeeded in my opinion. At the same time, the one way in which they could have introduce some sort of surprise or some sort of unpredictability was in the villain. They could have had a villain who shows up who you never seen or heard from before and that would have added some sort of, ooh, I wonder what happens to this person or ooh, how does this person fit into everything? But no, they haven't really done that because the villain is the fifth brother. The fifth brother is a character who we know is in Star Wars Rebels and Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, set after the events of the next game and beyond. So we also know that the villain can't die. We know that nothing bad can happen to the villain. And it's just really disappointing that there's no real stakes or tension throughout this book because nothing can possibly happen to any of the characters in there. But let's talk about what this book does do. Well, it's very inspired by the video games, as you might expect. It's very action heavy. A lot of this book is talking about Cal Kestis, how he's swinging his lightsaber and certain battle stances and lots of combat, lots of explosions. At the same time, the rest of the book is a romance story, which might, I'm not gonna say it might upset some people, I'm not gonna say it might bother some people, but if you're coming into this wanting a book based on or inspired from the video games, a romance story is probably not what you would expect. And there's nothing wrong with the romance story itself, but the way in which it's set up I think is just really bad. I think the story is very forced, very rushed. It's a very love at first sight situation, but even before that, it's like, what happens before first sight? I don't even know what the words are, but the romance just does not seem natural, it does not seem real, it does not seem believable. And it becomes very corny, very cheesy, very, very quickly. And sadly, that's the main thrust of the narrative here, because the book actually focuses on Meryn, not Cal Kestis. Cal's in it very much, as are the other crew of the Mantis, but Meryn is much more the focus. Now, the problem of focusing on Meryn is that, depending on how you played the first video game, you might not know much about Meryn. So here's the thing, in the first video game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, there are certain missions which you can take on in whatever order you like. If you chose to do the mission that featured Meryn last, well guess what, Meryn doesn't join your crew until right before the end of the game, meaning you get to spend very little time getting to know her, very little time getting to see her outside of what you assumed at first was a villainous role. So, if like me, that's what you did, Guess what? Meryn is a bit of an unknown quantity to you because there's not a lot of do in that game after you get introduced to Meryn as a side character, as a ally, unless you do that mission earlier, which is ill-advised because it's a tougher mission. So it's quite smart that they've gone into this book 
focusing on Merrin to build her out and flesh her out only, they haven't really done that. All we really get from Merrin in this book is that she is fueled by vengeance. Vengeance that she cannot satiate because, well, the people she wants revenge on are gone. It's the Separatists. And outside of vengeance, all she's really focusing on is this new character who she is romantically interested in called Fret. And I think Fret is probably one of the more annoying, frustrating parts of this book. So Fret is the defecting stormtrooper. I'm not going to say too much about it because it is getting into spoiler territory, but I do not like Fret. I think she's very annoying, I think she's very frustrating as a character. The fact that there are so many secrets surrounding her, the fact that there are so many hints at things about her which then just aren't really addressed or answered in interesting ways is a bit annoying in my opinion. So, new additions, the one thing that throws a little spanner in the works is this introdu introduction of Fret as a character. Fret is the only character who is brand new in this book, who we do not know the fate of. And it's just a bit frustrating and annoying and disappointing that nothing interesting really happens to her or about her or surrounding her. But yes, if you want a Star Wars inspired video game book adaptation of sorts, the action scenes might satiate your needs there, they might satisfy you. But it is worth saying that it is very action heavy at times, particularly towards the beginning of the book where there's a huge action sequence and it actually seems like Cal Kestis is enjoying himself, which I was a little, I don't know, a little uneasy about because he's a Jedi. Should he really be enjoying himself? I know when you play the games and you're mowing down all these stormtroopers and villains and so on that yes, there is an enjoyability factor to be had there, but he, the character, shouldn't be enjoying himself. So why does he seem to enjoy himself in the book? It like, action and killing is totally like against the Jedi way. So it just seems like an odd choice. And maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe he wasn't enjoying himself. Maybe I've misunderstood or misrepresented what was actually happening. I don't know. But it just didn't seem right to me that a Jedi would be seeking out these huge action set pieces. But those aren't the only ways in which it acknowledges the video games. There are moments where there are little nods and wink wink nudge nudge moments where it's like, oh, Cal can't talk right now because he's running along the side of a wall or he's climbing up a cliff or something like that. There are little lines like this which are like, fun but a bit corny and after a while it's like, right, we get it, you're trying to draw us in to remind us about things that happen in the game. So you don't need to do that exactly. This isn't a game, it's a book. And here's the thing about it, you might think, right, it's a book, so what's the story? Well, the sad thing is that the story is very brief. It's only, I think, 279 pages, which I actually think is a good thing. I think shorter books can be good, but he, there's not a lot that actually happens in that 279 pages. You've got the initial setup. You've got them going off on this mission. You've got a big down point for them. And then you've got the finale. That's literally it. Beat for beat, that's literally all that happens. They go from one place to the X to the next to the next and then it's over with. And yeah, there are some fun action sequences. Cal Kestis meeting the Inquisitor for the first time, I think is a very good scene and a very good moment, a good action scene. There's not a lot of these good moments in the book, but there are some good fun moments like that, very dramatic as well. I like the way in which it teases some of Sia's leanings towards the dark side, for example. That stuff's all well done as well. But not a lot actually happens. Instead, a lot of this book focuses on the psychology of the characters, which is one of the benefits of a book. But the problem is that a lot of what it's doing feels very repetitive. They're constantly going on about what characters are thinking, what they're feeling, and then they do it again, and then again. There's not a lot of growth because the characters can't grow because they have to be the same at the end of the first game at the end in the beginning of the next game, to a certain extent. So a lot of the psychological stuff does feel like they're waffling on. It does feel like they're padding out the book. And I feel like the story being told here would actually be more suited to a comic book where you could just get straight to the point where you can focus more on the action. And a lot of the psychological stuff I think can be summed up in like one or two sentences in most cases instead of these huge paragraphs that we've got where they often just feel like a character's waffling on their every word that comes into their mind. So for a short book it seems to drag because 
not a lot happens. So that's my review of Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars. Do I recommend it for fans of the video games? No, I don't actually. I don't think if you are a huge fan of the video games, I don't think you're going to get much out of this. It definitely isn't setting up much for the next game. The only thing it does, it does something with Grease, very minor, which I'm sure is going to be explained in one line of dialogue in the next video game. That's it. It's a very minor thing. That's the only way it sets things up for the next game. So if you're a fan of the game, you don't need to read this book. What if you're just a Star Wars fan? Well, I don't think there's a lot here that's expanded on the universe we've got. Everything surrounding the Shroud is interesting, but the reveals about that mean that it's actually not really that important at this point, so I don't know if we'll ever see or hear about that again. So if you're a huge Star Wars fan, not a lot here either for you. If you're just a fan of science fiction books, Again, this is more romance than sci-fi, and yeah, there is a lot of action in there, and some of the action is pretty good, but yeah, honestly, I don't know who this book is for. If you're a die-hard big Star Wars fan, well, yeah, I'm sure, maybe, but there's just not a lot here to talk about, and it's very disappointing. So, that's my sad review of Star Wars Jedi Battle Scores. Let me know in the comments and feedback down below what you thought of this book. And of course, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton. And most importantly, subscribe to my channel to get more content like this. And until next time, thanks for watching.